But now, Marie, how are you, Difficult Beauty? I am doing well. How are you doing, Difficult Beauty? I'm great. I haven't seen you in over a week. <laughs> I know. So much has happened in that time, too. <laughs> right. Like, our world, well, the United States of America is different now, right? Yes, it is. Yes, it wow. is. Oh, wow. Wait, before we jump into that, though, I need an update since I haven't talked to you in okay. over a week. I want to know what's been going on. I want to know how was your first show with WYXR, although I did kiss <laughs> like the beginning of it. <laughs> it was really good. It was so much fun. And thank you for tuning in. Thank yes. you for for encouragement for sure that's that's how I got on because you were like you should just just go for it so I was like all right and you did it it. and you got it and you doing it girl yeah so it was nice to be you know on air and also to hear people's reactions like I got a lot of messages you know on Twitter and Instagram of folks who tuned in and they really enjoyed it they loved hearing Dr. Rayshon Ray um, and people were like oh wow I like really learned something and I'm like yes that was the goal (laughs) so it was really fun good good well girl only thing I've been up to is busy with the boys uh Mm -hmm. Eli just did a big end of season soccer tournament for Hi. Dakota County. So we were busy with that all last week and into the weekend. And they came in second place. They're oh, the yeah. champs. They're the second place, second place uh, for DeSoto <laughs> County, but they're number one in South Haven. So I, I was telling him, I said, that's a huge accomplishment. He kept saying, but we lost, but we lost. I said, I lost the last game, but that don't mean, I said, you're going to win some and you're going to lose some, but you know, he's learning about that and how to feel about that. But I'm so proud of them. He did awesome. And he was like, I think I want to stick with soccer. I don't know if I want to play a different sport. I was like, well, you just let me know. I was like, it's okay to play a different sport, though. But, yeah, we were busy with that all weekend. So I'm I'm proud. Congratulations to him. That is very exciting. Yes. And uh, the older one, Dallas, uh, he gave me his progress report. Remember when he said, (laughs) I need to go to school. I don't need to do virtual learning. I need to go to school and my grades going to go up like that, right? Well, he had two 100s. Oh, oh, thank you, Two classes. There's only four classes. So he had three A's and one B. So he wasn't lying. But that B I don't like. I'm like, wait a minute. Because the B wasn't too far from what he had before, which was a low B. I was like, I need that to be an A. I'm working on it, Mom. I'm like, okay, okay. Oh, we well, I'm so happy to hear that because you know, I was worried for him for a second. Oh, I was too bad. <laughs> While we were talking about his dad came up in here, what we talking about now? What, what, what's going on? <laughs> Let me see that. He looked at it. He was like, okay. He said, but we're going to see what's on that report card. So Ooh. I think he's going to take care of his business, right? You know, he don't like punishment. Ooh. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. So yeah, so those are the updates. What is going on? So now let's jump in. Let's jump in. Look, you know, current events, y'all already know. Election. How could we not start with election results? We have election results or do we have election results? So (laughs) that is the question. You know, so of course. Biden and Harris have been kind of unofficially, unofficially, officially declared the winners. But of course, we know Trump is challenging any and everything in any way that he can and also spreading a lot of misinformation about voter fraud. Oh, so, so much misinformation. That's kind of where we are now. Um, of course, the um, the results have not been certified yet. Mm-hmm. So even though it's kind of like, okay. They're still we, counting. Uh, right. It's like, even though we kind of know they won, it still yeah. isn't like that official, official certification yet. Right. So my question to you is when you heard the results, what, how did you feel? I was like, oh, okay. I kind of thought that Biden was going to win anyway uh, with just me following the media coverage because, you know, it's all about the electoral votes at the end of the day. Right. And I think they were waiting for Pennsylvania. Maybe, I, I think maybe Pennsylvania Pennsylvania put him over. 
Yes, uh-huh. Pennsylvania was announced first, but there were still okay. um, like Nevada, um, right. Arizona. There was like a waiting game between a few different states. Right. So I was happy. I was more so happy uh, that Kamala Harris is the first female <laughs> woman VP, right? Um, uh-huh. I was very ecstatic about that. I had to put on my AKA shirt and walk around <laughs> the, go to the gas station, you know, <laughs> show my. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's not like I'm like super ecstatic, like because although Biden, I wanted Biden to win because I just abhor Trump. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the Democrats have so much work to do. Um, like a lot of the policies they have placed and a lot of the things that they've been doing, like things are gonna have to change. Like y'all guys talk a lot of good game, but when it comes to action, I I don't I need to see it. So um, I I am happy for the change, but I want to see the work getting done, um, especially on the Democrat side, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like I feel, okay, let me see what they do. Like we were stuck with them for four years. So um, I do feel like Kamala, you know, she's very aggressive and I think she can get things done. And hopefully Joe, <laughs> Joe will be a puppet to everybody. I was like, is he going to be a puppet to uh, uh, Congress? What is going on? I don't know. So I'm kind of like straddling the fence with everything. But I'm glad Biden won and Trump didn't. How did you feel? I kind of felt, I felt relief. Um, because I did not want Trump, you know, for another four years like yeah. that. It's just nightmare. Absolutely not him. <laughs> yeah, so I felt relief in that sense. But I think um, I just couldn't feel that joy right. and like... Like when Obama won, right? <laughs> right, right. Won. It wasn't that kind of joy. Was it? it was not at all. It wasn't, you know, and I saw so many people, you know, of course, celebrating, getting out in the streets, you know, all this. And I, you know, was watching people's videos and I thought it was so great. Like, look at all these people. They're just so happy. And I'm like, I just don't feel, I don't feel that. Like, yeah. I just feel relief. Like, and oh, I okay. guess, yeah, exactly. Like, okay. You know, like, okay. Um, I think maybe I'll feel some of that happiness on inauguration day maybe i mean i don't know i I think 2020 has just traumatized me too much to the point where i'm like any and everything can happen like we think one thing is happening and then all of a sudden like this big plot twist and that's how i feel like anything goes in 2020 i wonder if 2021 will be the same and speaking of inauguration i received a text from one of my line sisters today letting (laughs) us know her trip is already booked for inauguration I won't be there. <laughs> but I'm happy for you. <laughs> right. Oh my goodness. Well, you know, that, that brings up a lot of questions because what will a 2021 coronavirus inauguration you know, look like? Exactly. Like, what will that look like? Of course, we we saw when uh, Biden and Harris kind of gave their first remarks, they did like a socially distant kind of announcement where people were in their cars. But like, what does that look like for inauguration? You know, normally there are dozens of balls happening. So dozens of great parties. Like, what does that look like in coronavirus? Um, I know all the sores are ready to set it off. But like, what does that really look like <laughs> in in coronavirus well, um, we're gonna see soon honey we are, around the corner it is around the corner but you know um we may have a vaccine by then so of course you've probably heard pfizer has um found great results so far in their vaccine trial. So Mm -hmm. there's potential that we could have a vaccine, um, not maybe available to the general public, well, definitely not available to the general public, but potentially available to those most vulnerable and to those kind of um, frontline workers. Uh, So would you get a coronavirus vaccine? No. I'm just, I'm, I'm like you said, I'm traumatized. I don't want them putting nothing in me. Um, nope. Uh, I haven't had any issues with coronavirus. Hopefully I won't, 
But no, I am very skeptical on vaccines anyway. Like okay. the, the flu vaccine, I don't get it. I don't get it for my kids. I've never had yeah. any issues. I mean, the ones that I mandated to get for them for school, I have to get for them, right? But if it's anything extra, I'm not doing it. Are you getting it? You know I'm not. You know I'm skeptical too. <laughs> no. So right now the results from Pfizer's coronavirus vaccine so far in their testing, they say it's 90% effectiveness. Oh, that's a good percentage. It's really high because think about it, the flu vaccine is only like 40 to 60%, right? Mm. Uh, yeah, so like but this. My thing is, Sanaa, how, how long have you had time to do a trial? Like, usually that has to be studied over years. Okay, yeah. you're getting this 90%, but let me look at this data. <laughs> like, I want to see. Okay, okay, you pulled that many people in two weeks and got 90%. Uh-uh. <laughs> no. I know. That's I the us, yeah. for a while until, like, let me see three years work. <laughs> yes, that's, that's what they're saying, like to really know how effective it is. Like millions of people have to take the vaccine to really get an accurate understanding of, yeah. you know, what's going on. So right now, I think they said like close to 150,000 people had the vaccine, but compared to millions that are needed to really get a good read on the effectiveness, like we're very far from that. So I'm with you. Right. No because to the vaccine. No to the vaccine. It seems like that 90% is a little skewed to me. Like I need to give me I need to wait. Um, holler at me in three years and let me know what y'all talking about. Let me look at that percentage then. But I'm still not taking it then. <laughs> <laughs> y'all not putting that on market of beast in me. I'm not taking it. Oh. <laughs> well, our no. last piece of current event news, also thinking about our health, um, you know, there is um, an Affordable Care Act case that's being heard in the Supreme Court started um, started yesterday on Tuesday, um, and then we'll continue, you know, the hearings will continue, probably no final rulings for a few months. Um, but so far, it's in the Supreme Court. And right now, the key issue is the um, so-called mandate. So the mandate that required people to either have health insurance or pay a penalty. Um, now, you know, that mandate actually was zeroed out in 2017. So there's actually no financial penalty anymore. And so that's what's being heard in front of the Supreme Court. So there's mm -hmm. arguments that um, the whole mandate is unconstitutional um, and that as a result, the entire Affordable Care Act should be dismantled. So that's the argument, you know, against um, the Affordable Care Act. And so far, we've heard Supreme Court justices saying that um, just because that mandate was zeroed out, it doesn't mean the entire Affordable Care Act should be dismantled. Right. Um, but we'll see. There's still, you know, lots more arguments on both sides to be heard. That's interesting um, because like any other country, not any other country, but most countries, especially in Europe and um, just other places there, there's free health care. <sighs> they don't have to worry about that. So I think that that mandate and that penalty was more so coming from the insurance companies wanting that cheese, that money. I mean, it was definitely trying to incentivize people to like get health care, which again, like the whole premise of like, you have to incentivize people to get health care. Health care is expensive, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so that's why, you know, we have the Affordable Care Act, but we shouldn't even be having this conversation about no. if it's expensive or not, or what's covered and what's not. Um, it's I'm with necessary. You. Yeah, we should have universal health care. We are an advanced nation and other advanced nations have universal health care and their countries are still flourishing. Um, wow. I think, you know, we can do it. We definitely can do it if we, yeah. if we really wanted to. So when are they going to close this uh, case out with the Supreme Court? Um, it's estimated that it could continue for several months before a final decision is made. But once again, 2020, who knows? Things that normally take 
longer process, maybe shorter, I don't know. Um, but this is just one of many cases that will be heard in the Supreme Court that can very much change, um, change our daily lives. Wow. Well, I will be keeping up with that one, honey. Um, actually, since you brought up healthcare, it's enrollment time. You know, I'm getting those emails with my job and I have until Friday to elect <laughs> what I'm going to do. And what's crazy is every year it incrementally goes up. Like, yes. oh, this is going up again. <laughs> like, when does it go down? <laughs> never. It's never going to go down. <laughs> no, that's a shame. That is a shame. Wow. Okay. Updates, updates. Well, yeah, that's the news. <laughs> it's about that time. Esco's Pop Talk, where I'm updating you on the latest and the greatest in the entertainment world. I was so sad, Sanaa, when I got the news that host of Jeopardy, Aww. Alex Trebek, succumbed to his death. He died last week, and, you know, he was at the age of 80 and going through pancreatic cancer, so um, he lost his battle, and everybody is wondering who is going to be the new host of Jeopardy? And even when Alex Trebek was alive, they asked him, you know, do you have any suggestions or anyone that you want to take his place? And he was hands off with it. He was like, you know, I'm the host now. You guys make that decision. Like, I don't want to be a part of it, right? Wow. So some of the names that are coming out, um, do you know ABC News anchor George Stephanopoulos? Yes, yes. I could see him doing it, right? <laughs> I could so see George doing it. But um, he's just one of the names that's in the hat. But we still do not know. Um, um, I'm interested to see because I've always been a fan of Jeopardy, uh, especially when I was younger. Uh, oh, yeah. I would get out of school and walk to my grandmother's house and they would always have it on Jeopardy. So I was, <laughs> you know, from a very young girl, just watch that. And then it's the news, the news, the news. Right. So I, I am, I'm so sad about his death, but we all saw it coming, but he looked so good. Like, mm -hmm. That man went to the very end and he looked so good. I said, did they put a lot of makeup on him or he just was looking good? He looked so good. So, yeah. So rest in peace, Alex Trebek, uh, former host of Jeopardy. Mm -hmm. Also in the news, have you heard, Sanai, Blue Ivy has a new gig. Have you heard yes. about it? Yes. Yes. Well, Blue Ivy Carter is narrating the book Hair Love. And if you guys are familiar with Matthew Cherry, um, he created this children's book and recently announced on yesterday that Blue Ivy Carter would narrate the audio version of the book. And he even provided like a 13 second clip, right? And so we've heard her on Beyonce's album say a few <laughs> things and even sing, but she sounds really good. I, I think this is a good look for Blue Ivy, um, expanding the Carter brand, right? <laughs> yes, yes, so cute, so cute. Yes, only eight years old and rolling in the dough, baby. Rolling Doing in the dough. <laughs> And speaking of the Carters tonight, uh -oh. Did you get your Ivy box from Beyonce? Look, I was going to ask you, did you get yours? <laughs> <laughs> I did not. And I was so shocked to see all of these celebrities and um, influencers receiving these boxes. And I didn't get mine. And of course, <laughs> Ivy Park sold out as soon as it posted. So that is the, the, you know, the new thing with Beyonce and Ivy Park, all of the celebrities opening their Ivy boxes. So when you think about some of those celebrities, uh, just to mention, we saw Mariah Carey post about it. Um, also, Jasmine Sullivan, Carrie Washington, uh, Scotty Beam, and she's more so like of an influencer and to know Allegra the singer, but I was mad I didn't get my Ivy box. I was waiting on it too, girl. And I can't get no Ivy Park nothing because it's sold out, of course. But mm -hmm. hey, those celebrities and influencers have theirs. Did you get, oh, you didn't get any? 
I didn't either. But you know what? I'm going to be real honest. I don't want any members of Bay High to come after me. Hey, I'm not a fan of the Ivy Park. Like, I understand it's always, I feel like the theme is these kind of like weird color combinations. Mm-hmm. And I'm just not a fan. Like, I'm a fan of athleisure. And to me, it's just athleisure, which I could get any athleisure. Yeah, they all look alike, though. Yeah, they all look the same. It's just that hers have these really unique color combinations that we normally don't see. So for me, I'm kind of like, yeah, it's whatever. I don't get, like, my athleisure doesn't have to be Ivy Park. It can be another brand and I'm just as happy with right. what I'm wearing. Well, you but know, that. Ivy Park is all about that name recognition. Right, that right. Beyonce got that stamp of approval on it. So, you know, the beehive is going, but I mean, I didn't get my Ivy box. So well, that's you know what? maybe the next line, maybe the next release you'll have. Right. No, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> you never know. You never know. <laughs> well, that is the end of Esco's Pop Talk, Sana. Come on, Thank POV. You. Come on. Yes. Yeah, so today's POV, Purpose Over Vanity. I really felt inspired by Stacey Abrams and all the work that she did yes. in getting people registered to vote, um, you know, really getting people out to vote and not feel kind of disenchanted or even disenfranchised yeah. by the results of her race, right? Mm-hmm. And so with that, I just want to encourage people to stay committed to your values um, because obviously, you know, part of her values you can see within that is getting people politically activated Mm -hmm. and she still did that um, even though she herself didn't win you know her own race right Um, so I think that's just a good example to still continue to make decisions aligned with your values and maybe not aligned with your feelings right because she really her race really was stolen from her in many ways Uh, but she didn't let that kind of dampen her own investment and commitment to her values yeah, I agree. I like that POV, Sana. Stacey Abrams, she, baby, I think we're going to see a lot more from her, though. Like, this is just the beginning for her, so. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. And that really brings me to this week's Woman to Watch, which really a reframe to women to watch. I mean, shout out to all the Black women who really carried us forward to get this Biden-Harris confirmation hopefully <laughs> yes hopefully fingers still crossed <laughs> yes so i mean as always has been the case throughout our nation's history black women have really invested in their communities and as a result we've seen benefits for our entire country um so thinking even back to early you know women's club days right when black women were organizing for community services within their communities and so just a really long history of black women being extremely politically activated um and we see that today and we all benefit from that so big shout out to all the black women who really got into their communities um got people registered to vote help yeah. people you know get to the polls and then of course we have to give you know big ups to Kamala Harris um, for being the first woman vice president, um, first black woman, first South Asian woman in that VP position. Isn't that amazing? Like when you saw her and her husband on stage, it's like he's the first, what do they call him? The first man? Right. Right. And but he was on there, he was by his baby side, honey. He the, oh, yes. the first of <laughs> what do we call him again? I forgot. I'm not even sure what we call him. I but saw he's that people, person. He is that person. So he has a big mantle to uphold as well. Yes. And I saw somebody say that uh, Kamala and her husband, you know, they got married later in life. So it's not like they've been married for like decades upon decades. So I think that's mm-hmm. also just something unique about um, the vice president and her yeah. husband. Yeah, because, you know, usually everything is so traditional yeah. with these presidents, right? But hey, Trump broke the mold with that one, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but yes, I, I really, I just felt so proud to see her because it just lets you know, as a woman, the sky's the limit. We can do anything, either let these little girls know you can even be presidential in your life. So Absolutely. I am so happy about that. So 
Shout outs to all of you women out there that made it happen, baby. Yes. And I see you with the, uh, wait a minute, I, I heard you earlier, you said you put on, you know, some AKA paraphernalia. Then I saw you got the Kamala Harris hairdo. You oh. got that hair. <laughs> Look, it ain't no wig. No, we straighten this on natural air. Oh, Kamala, I don't know if you wear a wig or not, but yes, hon, I got, I had to get the Kamala going and represent. We kind of look alike down there a little bit. I ain't gone. Oh, hold up, hold up. <laughs> yes, I had to get my Kamala on, baby. Do you hear me? And I was so happy to see, you know, people shouting out the AKAs that I was like, that's what I'm talking about, Ski <laughs> Oh, yeah, you know. You know, yes, you got yes, yes. the first to do it, the first to do so many things. So, right. so yeah. So, ladies out there, you difficult beauties, uh, we want to hear from you. We want to know, uh, should we be watching you? You know, because we already trolling y'all on social media. So, <laughs> but we need okay. you guys' recommendations as well. Yes. <laughs> and we trolling you. Not <laughs> we trolling. <are> <laughs> Yes, so difficult beauties. Let us know if there is someone that is a woman to watch that you would like to recommend for the Difficult Beauty podcast. And we will see you all next week. Yeah. Toodles.